Ace cards. The cards Adolis carries with them throughout the entire series, no matter how much it changes over the course of that series. This is the last of the Ace Monster analysis series. That means this time we are looking at each of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains characters and determining what their Ace Monster or card was. Without further ado, let's start with the main character of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains, Yusaku Fujiki, Playmaker. This is one of the most controversial monsters for a character you can have. I know we've had some of those before, but this one really is messed up. Now, I know what you're thinking. Pfft, it's not that hard. It's easy. What was his 2500 attack monster of the corresponding summoning type that is based on the series that is in? That's the trend we've got. Dark Magician, normal monster for the original series. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, it should have been a fusion monster, but it's Neos, but in the manga, it is actually a fusion monster, so it's fine. For Yu-Gi-Oh! 5 Vs, it starred as Dragon Synchro. For Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal, it's Utopia, it succeeds. For Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, for Yuma, it's Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon, a Pendulum Monster. So this one is a Link Monster, easy. And what was his 2500 attack point monster? Well, if you go by that logic, it's Firewall Dragon. It's a Link Monster with 2500 attack, and its effect is once while face upon the field. Quick effect, you can target monsters on the field and or graveyard up to the number of monsters co-linked to this card, return them to the hand. If a monster this card points to is destroyed by battle or sent to the grave, you can special summon one Cyburst monster from your hand. You can only use each effect of Firewall Dragon once per turn. What's the problem with this monster being Yusaku's ace? Well, the thing is, it made its appearance, he got the card, and it seemed like it would be his ace for the rest of the series. However, strangely, it disappeared halfway through the series. Was never seen again. Basically, from episode 80 onwards, this is a 120 episode series, for the last 40 episodes, Firewall Dragon was gone. And weirdest of all, the ace monster of a character not appearing in the final duel. That's a bit weird, right? So what's the catch? What made Firewall Dragon disappear? Well, like most things, real world shenanigans. You see, they made Firewall Dragon way too overpowered. That effect that I read out earlier, that's its erited effect. That's its watered down ability. Prior to this, its effect actually was, instead of if a monster this card points to is destroyed by battle or sent to the grave, you can special summon one Cyburst monster from your hand. You can only use each effect Firewall Dragon Boards per turn. It was instead, if a monster this card points to is destroyed by battle or sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one monster from your hand whenever you want. I don't think you realize how broken that ability is until you see it in action being OP. In response to this, Firewall Dragon would be limited to one on the ban list in the real world, and then eventually outright banned, making it the first Yu-Gi-Oh! main character ace monster to hit the ban list. Put yourselves in the showrunner's shoes. At the end of the day, though you are telling a story, what is this show about? It's about advertising Yu-Gi-Oh! cards as products, and if your main character's ace monster is unplayable, nobody wants to buy that card, will they? So. What do you do? You get rid of it. However, luckily, much like how Yusei had Junk Warrior before Stardust, or Jaden had Flame Wingman before Neos, Yusaku had an ace monster of his own before Firewall Dragon, and that was Decode Talker. Its effect was it gains 500 attack for each monster it points to. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a card you control, you contribute one monster this card points to, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Before I carry on with this, I'd just like to point out, notice that this monster is a Link 3 monster. The running trend with an ace monster in Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains is if it's a Link 3 monster of a corresponding archetype that they play, it's probably their ace monster. You can be surprised how many Link 3 aces we're going to have today, but... Anyway, the way that Deco Talker is treated in the show feels much more like an ace monster. It appears in more duels, it appears in the final duel, it is the monster that wins the final duel, as well there is an array of different Code Talker monsters to go along with this one. And the main villain of the series, he plays a alternate version of Deco Talker in a kind of homage to Yusaku's ace monster. In fact, while we're here, we might as well quickly cover the final villain. Spoilers! I. The Dark Ignis. I was originally Yusaku's AI companion, but after the course of the series and everything that happens, he turns evil, but not really evil, but kind of evil, enough that he wants to wipe out humanity and stuff. 
the, the point is, in homage to Yusaku, who he dueled with throughout the course of the series, his ace is a reflection of Deco Talker. So his was Dark Templar at Ignista. This monster had the effect, if a monster is special summoned to a zone this card points to, even during the damage step, you can special summon as many level 4 or lower at Ignista monsters from your graveyard as possible to your zones this card points to, but their effects are negated. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon one Cyburst monster from your graveyard. Just for a little bit of fun, the main character Yusaku, he had a Karibo monster. Yusaku's is Link Karibo, which basically makes an attacking monster's attack go down to zero by tributing itself very karibo like um but the parallel is that i also has a parallel to this which is ling karibo which basically negates a trap card so it's kind of cool i don't know it's, they're not obviously ace monsters but they're cool to have anyway with all that out of the way it's true that deco talker and firewall dragon both have upgraded and alternate versions of themselves which support the theory that well one of these has to be the true ace monster and if we look at the final duel yusaku does get out his ultimate boss form of firewall dragon first which is firewall dragon dark fluid however that monster is defeated and then he gets out his ultimate boss form of deco talker which is of course access code talker let's be honest access code talker is insane in the real world but still but that monster is also destroyed but in its place what is summoned but of course deco talker the final battle comes down to deco talker versus dark templar decode comes out on top and ultimately yusaku wins with this monster so at the end of the day it's really hard to say because i really do think firewall dragon is and always was meant to be the true ace monster for yusaku However, due to real world shenanigans being too overpowered, let's just blame the people that created the card for that one, it had to be put to the wayside. So even though we'd still get upgraded forms of that monster throughout the series, we'd never see Firewall Dragon again. Luckily, they had a backup ace monster to fall onto, which was Deco Talker. Deco Talker is an awesome monster, and all the Code Talker alternate forms with all their different abilities and stuff. Firewall was supposed to be the ace, but. Throughout the course of the anime, it did turn out to be Deco Talker. And if I'm being honest, I think Yusaku as a protagonist, as cool as he is and as good he is, he is as a, a duelist and everything, he lacks any emotional attachment to his card. I don't know how Yusaku feels about like Deco Talker and Firewall Dragon in the same way that I know how Yugi feels about the Dark Magician, it's his faithful companion, backstory behind it and everything. Now Yusei feels about Neos, it's the symbol of his deck, or Flame Wingman, it's just his favorite card in general. Yusei, Stardust Dragon, the things that its effect reflects in terms of him. But for Decode and Firewall, I don't know, it just feels like a good card in his deck. I don't know, and that seems like a little bit of a shame. Anyway, I think we've spent enough time on these two. Let's move on to the main rival next. Ryoken Kogami. Varys. The, uh, the dub names for all these characters are really weird to me because I watched the sub and never watched the dub. So Revolver is his name to me and a lot of other characters, but Varys anyway. Varys plays a Dark Dragon deck that mainly focuses on the rocket archetype of monsters. His ace monster is, of course, Borrel Load Dragon. Its effect is neither player can target this card with monster effects. Once per turn, quick effect, you can target one face-up monster on the field. It loses 500 attack and defense. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effect's activation. At the start of the damage step, if this card attacks an opponent's monster, you can place that opponent's monster in a zone this card points to and take control of it. But send it to the graveyard during the end phase of the next turn. Everything about this monster monster screams ace monster for arrival it is a dragon monster it's 3000 attack and that's all we really need to know isn't it the more we see varus use this monster throughout the series the more upgraded and boss forms we get of this card however it's worth mentioning that there is another monster that meets the criteria for ace monster that varus has and interestingly, the monster I'm talking about, he got it in the same episode that Yusaku got his Firewall Dragon. He got it in the same way. He got it from the Data Storm. That monster is Topologic Bomber Dragon. It's 3,000 attack, but it's not a dragon. It's a Cyburst type monster. But that's going to give away why this monster isn't its ace 
It's not an ace, basically, but its effect is, if another monster is special summoned to a zone and link monster points to while this monster is on the field, destroy all monsters in the main monster zones. Also, your other monsters cannot attack for the rest of this turn. After damage calculation, if this card attacked an opponent's monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the monster's original attack. Now, if we look at Topologic Bomber Dragon's effect in comparison to Firewall Dragons, assuming that these two were the ace monsters for these, well, it makes sense in the sense that this monster is all about reducing the field down to just Topologic Bomber Dragon on the field. That feels like a rival kind of ability to have, whereas Firewall Dragon is about building the field up and get as many monsters on the field to keep linking and making bigger monsters and stuff. So, yeah, you can see the contrast between these two. So it makes sense as a kind of rival card. However, the problem is this is a Cyburst monster. The whole point of Varus's character is he's trying to get rid of the Cyburst stuff and the Ignises and everything. But the reason that he uses this card is he could describes it as using poison to fight poison. So that's what this monster is. So I think based on that, this is not his actual ace monster. Plus it disappears throughout partway through the series and another character starts using this monster. So that's fine. Instead, it's just Borrow Low Dragon. That's his ace monster. So I think that makes sense. And if you're wondering who takes Topologic Bomber Dragon, well, it's actually a character called Pandor, who is a anti-Ignis. She was created to defeat the Ignises, and she took data from people that dueled against the Ignises. And because Varus was so good at it, she basically had a Topologic, Topologina deck kind of thing, with the ace monster, of course, being Topologic Bomber Dragon. Theodore Hamilton. Soul Burner. Now, Soul Burner plays a Salomon Great deck, which had a good spell of being very meta relevant in the real world for a while. Uh, as such, his ace monster is the core of his Salomon Great deck, the Link 3 monster, Salomon Great Heat Leo. If this card is Link Summoned, you can target one card in your opponent's spell and trap zone, shuffle it into the deck. Once per turn during your main phase, if this card was Link Summoned using Salomon Great Heat Leo as a material, you can target one face up monster on the field and one monster in your graveyard. The attack of the first target becomes equal to the other targets until the end of the turn. If you're wondering how you can use Salomon Great Heat Leo to summon Salomon Great Heat Leo, the field spell when it's on the field lets you do something called a reincarnation summon, which is basically you just you take Heat Leo off the field and you summon a new Heat Leo in its place. I think you can do that with all the Salomon Great monsters. And it's just how you give them their uh, additional effects, basically. Fun fact about Soul Burner. Soul Burner is like the, the best friend of Yusaku uh, after he appears in the series. And as such, it kind of makes them the Yugi and Joey of this series. And as such, because of that as well, of course, Heat Leo and Deco Torka are going to get smushed together in the real world for a pretty cool card. Deco Torka Heat Soul. Sky Zizen. Blue Angel, or is it Blue Girl, or is it Blue Maiden? Basically, this character goes through a whole character shift a few times. She starts off as Blue Angel, like an idol. She plays the trick star archetype, and then she starts basically being an apprentice for a, a thief character, Ghost Girl. She just takes on the persona of Blue Girl, and then after she gets the Water Ignis, she becomes Blue Maiden, and she gets a Marincess deck, which... I don't think it's as good as the Trick Stars, especially in a speed duel format, but that's completely regardless of the point. Let's go one at a time. For her Blue Angel and Blue Girl persona when she's playing Trick Stars, her ace monster for her Trick Star deck is her Link 3 Trick Star Holly Angel, which is kind of the face of the Trick Star monsters. It's a Link 3, so it makes sense. Plus, it helps with the OTK. Its effect is each time a Trick Star monster is normal or special summoned to a zone this card points to, inflict 200 damage to your opponent. Trick Star monsters this card points to cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. If your opponent takes damage by a Trick Star monster's effect, this card gains attack equal to the damage they took until the end of the turn. It's a good card, basically this on the field is protecting your monsters, summon monsters into zones it points to, you're doing damage, and 200 damage doesn't sound like a lot of damage, but the whole point of Trick Stars is death by a thousand cuts. Those 200s, they add up really quickly, especially when you got the field spell, Trick Star Light Stage, which is a candidate for, could have been like an ace card, because it's so good in the real world version of the deck and everything, but that's really good. And you've got things like Trick Star Candina. Candina's always felt like the main deck monster ace card in a way, but there's so much different stuff. After she moves away from Trick Stars, which again is such a shame, she should have absolutely 
destroyed the main character in her first duel against him. I have a whole video on that. Ignore that. But when she gets the water AI Ignis, she starts playing a water-based deck and she plays Marincess. Her Marincess deck isn't as developed as the Trickstar deck, which is a bit of a shame. So we kind of had two choices for an ace card, this one. I feel like I know which one it is, but we might as well cover the two of them. The first one is Marincess Crystal Heart. Crystal Heart feels more like the Water AI's Ignis ace card instead because, all right, it, sh this card was called G Golem Crystal Heart originally, and she gave that to the Earth Ignis. The Earth Ignis looked after it, and then he died, and then that card became this card, and then this card came back to them. So it went a big, like, full circle thing, and it reflects... What does it reflect? Like the love between earth and water or something like that. But the point is, I don't think this is her ace card. It's just a card that they use in the deck and it's important to the Ignis that she uses. Based on that, I think it makes more sense for Blue Maiden's ace monster in her Marincess deck being Marincess Bubble Reef. Its effect is once per turn during each standby phase, you can banish one water monster from your graveyard or face up on the field to draw one card. Each time a monster is banished face up, this card gains 600 attack for each until the end of the turn. Send one water monster from your hand to the graveyard, special summon one of your banished Marincess monsters. Honestly, it's the closest thing to a ace and boss monster that she has in this deck. And in the real world, there's some much bigger Marincess monsters like Argonauts and stuff like that. And maybe one of the other ones could have been classed as an ace, but I, I feel like this is just the right one to go for. Blue Girl, Blue Maiden, whatever you want to call her. She has a brother, and her brother is Akira Zaizen. Now, he plays a Tindangle deck, which has never had any love ever, so it should get some support, because it's interesting, but the, his ace is the link-free monster, Tindangle Acute Cerberus. Its effect is gains 3,000 attack if you have three or more Tindangle monsters with different names in your graveyard, including Tindangle Base Gardener. Gains 500 attack for each Tindangle monster it points to. At the end of the battle phase, if this card declare an attack, you can special summon one Tindangle token. Now, these aren't the only brother-sister pair we have. We also have my favorite female character. I just like her design, and it's such a shame because she's... She never wins, but I think she's cool. And that is Ghost Girl, a.k.a. Emma B. Show. It's crazy as well, but she loses so much. She plays like one of those busted decks for a time period. She plays Altergeist. Altergeist, such a strong control deck. And like you, if you're playing against them, most of the time you don't know what's going on. There's so much stuff happening. Uh, but her ace monster is the Link 3 monster, Altergeist Prime Banshee. Its effect is during the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute one of her Altergeist monster. Special summon one Altergeist monster from your deck to zone this monster points to. This card is sent from the field to the grave. You can target one Altergeist card in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You know what I probably could have done for a lot of these monsters? Was this an ace monster on Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links? Does it have an ace monster summon animation? Well, yes, it does. So that must mean it's an ace. Probably could have done that earlier. But uh, Ghost Girl has a brother, half-brother, called Kenneth Dryden, a.k.a. Blood Shepherd. Might be something different in the dub, but still. He played a Battle Drone deck, which has never actually been printed in the real world. There's a couple decks from Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains that have never made it to the real world, actually. But as far as I know, his ace monster is his Link 3 Battle Drone General. George Gore. Now, he played two decks throughout the series. Uh, at first, he's like an entertainer duelist thing, and then he has like an existential crisis, and he changes. But However, originally, he played a Goki deck. Uh, so his ace was the Link 3 Goki monster, Goki the Great Ogre. It had a very simple effect that all monsters on the field lose attack equal to their original defense. If this card would be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can destroy one of your monsters this card points to instead. Now, eventually, he would swap to a Dino Wrestler deck, and instead of his previous ace, he would have a different Link 3 ace monster representative of that archetype, which was Dino Wrestler King T-Rex Paul. To play on Wrestle. If this card battles, your opponent can activate spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. Your opponent's monsters cannot target monsters for attack, except this one. At the start of the opponent's battle phase, you can target one attack position monster your opponent controls. During the battle phase, your opponent cannot attack with other monsters until that one has, and if it does not declare an attack, destroy it at the end of the battle phase. That's a much more convoluted effect compared to his last ace monsters one, but I guess it makes sense with his... He, he needs to get well hard in it 
to beat the villains or whatever he is. I, I forgot his character arc. I've completely forgot. We have a couple of the Ignises, which is like the AIs throughout the series. The fire one, the water one, don't ever duel. And of course, we've already covered the dark Ignis. He becomes the main villain, I. However, the earth Ignis, I was tempted to say it was G Golden Crystal Heart because it was given to him by the water Ignis and he cared for it and he wouldn't let anything happen to it in the duel, I'm pretty sure. Then it went off to become the, the Crystal Heart for the Marincess deck anyway. That's just probably his favorite card i don't know i think his ace was g golem invalid dolman because he played a g golem deck this is a link three monster uh, it just makes sense right windy the wind ignis now his ace and archetype was never printed as well however uh, it is a link three monster called storm rider ship bahamut bomber lightning the light ignis now lightning was one of the main antagonists for a good chunk of the series and his ace monster which also hasn't been printed yet it's the i think it's called the armatos archetype they're like these roman statue looking things but his ace was his link three armatos legio lagatus Legionis. That is a mouthful. Now, fun fact, there was a character called Robopi. She was like a little rumba looking thing. Basically, it was Yusaku, the main character's cleaning robot. And through something that happened throughout the series, it was given life. Eventually, it would drive it crazy because it was a cleaning robot. It shouldn't have been given artificial intelligence. Hilariously, when it came to life, uh, he was originally like a housemaid, obviously. So what would a housemaid creature thing play in real life they'd play a appliancer deck his ace was actually a link one monster appliancer laundry dragon however that that's part of how this archetype works now technically there were two more ignises they were the second generation and third generation of ignises that were created by the ignises harlan the second gen ignis and bowman the third gen ignis these two had a thing where they would improve and grow stronger throughout the course of the series however they both played a hydra drive deck which was an interesting thing. I don't think it exists in the real world either just yet. It's all about countering the four main uh, core attributes in Yu-Gi-Oh! Fire, Water, Wind, Earth. The Link ones attack directly, I think, if the opponent controls the corresponding attribute. The Link twos and higher gain multiple attributes and can negate the effects of monsters that they share an attribute with. And the Link fours gain protection or destruction effects of a corresponding attribute or anything like that. Harlin, the second gen weaker Ignis, he played a twin Hydra Drive Knight as his ace monster. However, for Bowman as the stronger one, his ace was Trident Hydra Drive Lord. However, I'm gonna make an argument that neither of these were his ace. He actually played a ace spell card. This ace spell card was called Judgment Arrows, a card that probably shouldn't be printed in the real world as it is the first and only spell card to have link arrows on it. You see, by using this card, if a link monster this card points to battles, its attack becomes double its current attack during damage calculation only. When this card leaves the field while it points to a monster, destroy all those monsters. You can only control one judgment arrows and only in your spell and trap zone a link monster points to for an era where link monsters where they pointed to was the only way that you could summon out fusion synchro exceeds monsters back in the day this was really really broken and fun fact the final villain of the series i actually did play this card in his deck i think judgment arrows was bowman's true ace card the main rival of the series, Varys, he had a bunch of lackeys, which were the Knights of Hanoi. We have his second in command, Spectre. He played a Sun Avalon deck. His ace monster was his Link 3, Sun Avalon Dryonome. Fun fact, this archetype can be absolutely nutty in the real world. Dryonome's effect is that it cannot be targeted for attacks, but it does not prevent the opponent from attacking directly. Three times per turn, if you take battle or effect damage, you can gain that much life points instead. You do special summon one Sunvine monster from your extra deck. Once per turn, when a monster this card points to is targeted for an attack, it can negate the attack, and if you do, move that monster you control to another of your main monster zones. Should we blast through the rest of these? I think we should. We've got Dr. Genome, who is the lieutenant. He plays Helix Necro Darwin as his ace. Clarissa Turner, the lieutenant. Dark Mummy Surgical Forceps. Aso, another lieutenant. Motor Worm Spreader Queen. The Knights of Hanoi fodder characters. They tend to play random decks themed around typically like dark attributes, 
big monsters, big beatdown monsters and stuff. They played a bunch of different ones. I guess if I want to give like just a specific one, just as a representative of the whole thing, I'll go with Crackling Dragon. It appeared in the first episode, I think it is, but it's a cool monster. Outside of the Knights Hanoi, we have three more characters left to cover. We have Queen. Queen uses an allure deck, which is kind of cool. What's funny is her... Everybody has an ability, basically, a uh, a skill in a duel that they can activate. It's like an effect unique to them. Uh, her skill is called Honey Trap, which, if you know what Honey Trap means, I guess it makes sense for the character, but it's just like, okay. Her ace is Golden Alert Queen. This applies for a few characters we've covered today, but this is an example of a ace monster that is at the same time a boss monster. She didn't appear enough and have enough duels to get an evolution of this monster to become a boss. So this is one of those characters that is a ace and a boss monster mixed together. Kusanagi. I know him as Kusanagi in the uh, in the Japanese, but he plays a code breaker deck, which is kind of cool. I actually couldn't decide which one his ace was. He's got like a main deck code breaker, like a virusy card, and he's got like a link two and a link three version. I guess if I'm going by my logic, it's the link three, but that feels like the boss. So it's either the main deck one, which is. Codebreaker Zero Day is his ace main deck monster, or it's Codebreaker Virus Swordsman, which is his ace monster, which might make sense. But then again, we've got Codebreaker Virus Berserker. The Codebreaker cards are actually kind of cool. They have like a bunch of negative effects you can use to take advantage of the opponent and stuff. It's kind of cool. Finally, we have the comic relief character, Naoki Shima. He plays a monkey themed deck, basically. He's just a comic relief character, it's not a big deal. Green Baboon, Defender of the Forest is his ace. He actually takes part in a really funny duel where he and a Knight of Hanoi both brick at the start of their duels because they play too many high attack monsters. They look at their hands, they look at each other and smile like they've got, I've got the perfect hand. It's funny, I might do a, a duel analysis for it in the future. It's literally just two turns. It's not a good duel, but it's funny. With that, that is the Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains ace monsters i don't know if i'm missing any it's been a while since i watched the series i watched it once but it hasn't stuck in my mind as good as some of the other ones which is a shame because i liked brains even though i did think it was really really rushed maybe if we get a another master duel themed Yu-Gi-Oh series we can do this again for now we're going to move on to boss monsters in the future and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like i appreciate it bye everyone